Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over how to solve radical equations. Our focus on this presentation will be how to solve radicals um, of the form where you have two radicals, the sum of two radicals equal to a number. All right, so the problem, the instructions for the problem we're going to be solving is for us to solve and check for extraneous solutions. You always want to check um, your solutions after solving a, ra a radical equation for extraneous solutions because this could get introduced when you're squaring both sides of your equation. Okay, so this is a very important step. Now the problem on the consideration is the square root of 5a plus 5 minus the square root of 3a plus 4. That equal to 1. Alright, so the first step in solving radical equations involves isolating the radical terms or radical term. In this case, we have two radicals, so we have them isolated on the left side of the equation. Next step is to eliminate. We're going to eliminate the radicals using their inverse. Okay, so the inverse of square root is square. So what we're going to do is square both sides of the equation. Okay, square both sides of the equation. Now I'm going to be using a shortcut to um, facilitate the expansion process of the left side. So what we have is um, the following shortcut, which is very, very helpful to master when you are solving radical equations. So if you have the square of the sum of two terms, uh, this can be written in its expanded form as a square plus 2ab plus b square. Okay, when you foil out the this expression right here, a plus b raised to the second power, you end up with um, this result. Now if you have the difference of two terms squared, this will be a square minus 2ab plus b squared. So because of the negative here, we have the alternation of signs. Think about the coefficients we have here. We have 1, 2, 1, and then also here we have 1, 2, 1. Do you recall where these numbers show up? They are the numbers on Pascal's triangle, okay, for binomial expansion. So if you have 1, 1, 1, the third row, 1, 2, 1 of Pascal's triangle, these coefficients are what's showing up here, 1, 2, 1. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, how does this, these formulas apply to this problem? We have a radical minus a radical quantity square, so we can use a minus b quantity square formula to expand the left side of this radical equation. In this particular case, a is going to be the first radical. Um, a is going to be the square root of 5a plus 5. And b is going to be the square root of 3a plus 4. Okay? Now, if we apply this formula here, we're going to have um, a square first, a square. A squared is going to be the square root of 5a plus 5 quantity square. So that's a squared. Next we have minus 2ab. Minus 2ab is going to be minus 2 times the square root of a. I mean 2 times a, which is the square root of 5a plus 5 times b, which is the square root of 3a plus 4. Okay, 2ab plus b square. Plus b square, we're going to square the b radical. So we're going to have plus root 3a plus 4 quantity square. Okay, all right, now let's go ahead and finish it off, we have it equal to, and then we'll go, we're going to square the um, the right side, okay? So equal to 1 square. 
So that will be squared also. One square is simply uh, one. So let's just put one there. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, simplify uh, the left side of our equation. The square root of 5a plus 5 squared, the square root and the square are inverses, so they cancel each other out, which yields 5a plus 5. Now let's take a look at the middle term. There is a property of radicals that we are going to use here. So something I'd like you to note is that the square root of a times the square root of b is equal to the square root of ab. So what this property is telling us is that when you multiply two radicals, it's the same thing as uh, finding the square root of the product of the radicands a and b. We're going to apply the same principle here. We have the radicands 5a plus 5 and 3a plus 4. We're going to be uh, finding the square root of the product of those two quantities. So we're going to have negative 2 rad and then we have 5a plus 5 times 3a plus 4. <coughs> Alrighty, and then um, plus. Now the right, the last term, the square root of 3a plus 4 squared. These are inverse operations, so they cancel each other out. And we are left with 3a plus 4. Okay, so that's equal to 1. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms. On the left side, we have 3a and 5a. They're like terms. We're going to combine them together. That yields 8a. And then we have um, positive 4 and positive 5 are like terms. Combine them together, you get plus 9. Minus 2. Now we're going to just expand the, find the product of these two binomials here. Okay, since they're binomials, you can just follow them out. You have first, outer, inner, then last. So as the first is going to be 15a square, outer is going to be plus 20a, inner is going to be plus 15a, there goes your inner right here, and then last, 5 times 4 is going to be plus 20a. Okay, so we're taking the square root of that entire expanded um, expression that's equal uh, to 1. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify the radical term. So we notice that there are like terms um, in the radicand that can be combined, all right? So we have 15a squared. The middle terms in the radicand are like terms, so they can be combined to yield uh, 35a plus 20. Okay, so that entire expression equals 1. All right, now the goal again is to isolate the radical. Initially we had two radicals, now we have one which means we're making progress. So we're going to isolate this one radical and eliminate it by squaring. To achieve this, let's move everything else to the right side. So we're going to subtract 8a from both sides and I'll subtract 9. The result is going to be negative 2 times the square root of 15a squared plus 35a plus 20. All that equals to, uh, we can switch this around, negative 8a. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. Now let's go ahead and get the radical isolated. To accomplish that, we'll divide both sides of the equation by the coefficient of the radical term, which is negative 2. Okay, divide by negative 2. So we're now going to have, um, on the left side, these negative 2 divide out, 
leaves us with a radical which is exactly what we wanted, 15a squared plus 35a plus 20. And then on the right side we can divide both by t negative 2 which gives us 4a and a negative 8 divided by a negative 2 is positive 4. Remember anytime you divide numbers with the same signs your result will always be positive, okay? But if the signs are different, then your quotient will be negative. Now that we've isolated the radical, we're going to proceed to square both sides of our equation. Okay, on the left side, the square root and the square cancel each other out. So we have 15a squared plus 35a plus 20. And that is equal to, on the right side, we can use the same formula we talked about earlier. So we'll use a shortcut, a plus b square is going to be um, a square plus 2ab plus b square. If I apply that here, a square is going to be 16a square plus 2ab will be 2 times 4a times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32, so we have 32a plus b squared, which is 16. Now the radicals are gone, which is excellent. What we have is a quadratic equation. Now to solve a quadratic, the resulting equation, we are going to put it in standard form. In order to keep my square, positive, I'm going to go ahead and move all the terms on the left side to the right. So I'm going to subtract 15a square, subtract 35a, subtract 20. Same thing to, to the right side. And what is that going to yield? It's going to give us, um, let's see, 16a squared minus 15a squared is just 1a squared, so we have a squared minus 3a minus 4 is equal to on the right side, on the left side, everything adds up to 0. Now let's go ahead and solve this resulting quadratic equation in standard form. We're going to use the x game here. So we make a nice little x. ac is going to be negative 4 and b is going to be negative 3. Two numbers that work, two numbers that multiply to give you negative 4 and add to give you negative 3 are 1 and negative 4. In this setup, what you want to re recall is that the coefficient of the square term, which is known as a, is equal to 1. So in this case, there is no need uh, to factor by grouping, okay? So no need for grouping. We can jump to the factored state, which is a plus 1 times a minus 4 equals 0, using the numbers here. Applying the zero product property will set both factors equal to 0. For the first one, subtract 1 from both sides. We have a is equal to negative 1. On the right side, we add 4. And we have a is equal to 4. Now the question is, are these the solutions to the original radical equation? The answer is, we do not know. We always have to check. Anytime you're done solving a radical equation, you always have to check to see if one or both of our solutions in this case are extraneous, or if they are both actually solutions, or just if only one is a solution. Okay, so we're going to start out by checking um, a equals negative 1. So let's do a check. Remember the original problem is root 5a plus 5 minus root 3a plus 4 equals 1. So when we are checking a equals negative 1, the first solution, we just plug it into the radical equation. 5 times negative 1 plus 5 minus 3, the square root of 3, times negative 1 plus 4. Is this equal to 1? Is it? That's the question. 
okay so let's go ahead and simplify the left side to see if we have a true statement or a false statement 5 times negative 1 is negative 5 so is negative 5 plus 5 the root of that sum minus the square root of negative 3 plus 4 is it equal to 1 negative 5 plus 5 is 0 is the square root of 0 minus the square root of negative 3 plus 4 is positive 1 is it equal to 1 square root of 0 is 0 minus the square root of 1 is 1 is 0 minus 1 equal to 1 0 minus 1 is negative 1 is negative 1 equal to 1 the answer is no this is a false statement what does that mean it means that um, the first answer we got this one is extraneous for sure all right so what's our conclusion does that automatically make this the second answer a equals 4 uh, an answer we also have to check okay we, we can't really predict we have to check it out so we're gonna carry out the same procedure with a equals 4 substitute it into the original problem and we will uh, see what we get okay so substituting 4 into the first radical we have the square root of 5 times 4 plus 5 minus the square root of 3 times 4 plus 4 uh, is this equal to 1 is it 5 times 4 is 20 is 20 plus 5 the square root of 20 plus 5 minus the square root of 3 times 4 is 12 plus 4 is it equal to 1 20 plus 5 is 25 is the square root of 25 minus the square root of 16 12 times 4 equal to 1 is it well let's go ahead and uh, finish this off roots 25 is 5 is 5 minus 4 is it equal to 1 5 minus 4 is 1 is 1 equal to 1 the answer is yes excellent so that shows that we actually have just one solution this answer is not extraneous is an actual solution so our solution to the problem don't forget to indicate it clearly is a equals 4 the other one a equals negative 1 is an extraneous solution which means that it does not satisfy the original condition thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation really appreciate it if you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of radicals um, do give us a thumbs up your positive feedback will be greatly appreciated if you have any questions or comments just place it in the comment section below and we'll be more than glad to um, support you do subscribe to our channel for updates to other math tutorials such as this more clips can be found on mathgutserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.